Man, so an indicator has just flashed, which could suggest we could have a painful Q1 and start to 2023. Days ago, I shared with you the importance of the dollar index and getting this weekly candle close below our daily EMA ribbon. Now we've got the candle closed and we closed back inside the daily EMA ribbon in the weekly EMA ribbon. So this is not looking good. And this could spell a painful start to 2023. In this video, I'm going to break down all the things that are going on. We're going to look at the Bitcoin charts, but we're also going to analyze how long a potential recession and pain could last. Don't forget to smash the likes, guys. Check out the links in the description. Hopefully, you guys are having a fun and restful festive period. And the markets definitely are, right? You're seeing here on Bitcoin, we've had a really, really boring period, right? Ever since we've had the, Sam, uh, the FTX fall, we've pretty much been consolidating side here with a number of weeks here trying to move into our weekly EMA ribbon if, if you look at it the bears are in huge control right now right we've not even managed to touch our EMA ribbon ever since falling out in April so we've been hugely extended this entire year as we know and now let's analyze some of the different charts so if we take a look here at the daily you can see here on the daily we run into our EMA ribbon now so now the worry is are we going to get our next big move just like we run into our EMA ribbon here rejected run into our EMA ribbon are we going to get that rejection and a big move back down to test those 15,500 levels that is what I'm personally preparing for a retest of these 15,500 levels on Bitcoin you can see here we're running into our EMA ribbon and we're showing very little volume we're showing very little strength going into this movement so it's more likely than not that we create a lower high remember our previous high was really impressive sitting at 18,400 range before Jerome Powell threw us back down to the downside so are we going to get rejected and fall to the downside now that that then brings us back onto this dollar index, a really important indicator. And we've done pretty well here on the dollar index dating back to November when we originally flipped its daily EMA ribbon. You'll remember we tracked this throughout the year and in September we saw a triple top pattern where it started off with a double pop top and we were like, oh, we're seeing weakness here. We failed to create a higher high and we started down trending here on the dollar index. We then flipped our EMA ribbon and we had a nice big extended move and this has been a nice bearish move. Remember, Bitcoin is inversely correlated to this. We need the dollar index to show weakness, which means risk can start to turn back. What we then wanted to look at was can we get the same on the weekly? Can we see the weekly break? Because then that will be major. Because if you look back and date back to all the times we've lost it on a weekly EMA, we flipped the EMA bullish on the weekly. We've had huge moves down in the dollar index, which is what would be beautiful here because that could set up Bitcoin's next big run back to all time highs. But but, but we have not managed to get it. We were dollars away. We were very, very close to breaking our eBay ribbon. Let's just get nice and zoomed in there so you guys can see. It was just here. We were right below it during the week. And then we got pushed back up higher uh, as the week went on. So we need to see now what happens this week because the scary thing now, which could set up a horrible quarter, is if the dollar index decides it wants to bounce back with vengeance. If it decides it wants to do this, that would be an absolute nightmare for wider markets and for crypto and this is the fact that a lot of people are not factoring in what if we could get that what if we get that and we post another higher high and this was just the early innings and the start of what's going to be a deep recession and that brings me on to the next topic is we need to get real about this recession i posted a couple of videos now about the impending recession how you guys can prepare how you guys can uh follow the right steps to make sure you navigate through a recession if it's your first one it's crypto's first one but it's not my first one because i've spent years in traditional finance so what i wanted to do was remind you guys of historical recessions. And there's two ways I can show you this. I'm gonna show you this based on GDP first from here. And the main thing to take away is this one, which is the 2008, 2009 housing bubble financial crisis. This is the one that I remember when I started working in traditional finance, I went in at a recessionary period. So I remember this one vividly. And then what you've had since is the pandemic one, which was, a, in my opinion, a very short-lived one, uh, counteracted with heavy quantitative easing and printing from central banks across the world. So the one we need to compare to is this one. And this one, you technically enter the recession from Q4 2007, and technically you emerged at Q3 2009. So almost the best part of two years there. Now remember, this is just the technical reading. You feel a recession well before then and you continue to feel the effects thereafter. So you've got to put a bit of padding on both sides as well. Now another way to show you how long a recession typically lasts, and the data will show you that on average it's 10 to 11 months, but we're going to try to get to a bit of a better number here, is let's take a look at the historical recessions. And if we look at the most recent to, the, and we'll go backwards because some of them are irrelevant for us, but we'll start from the most recent. 2020 pandemic, 
two months of recession. Can we compare to that? No. This is the one I'm more interested in. 2007 to 2009, 18 months in a housing bubble burst with a financial crisis. This one's a little bit more important to us, right? Let's keep going. In 2001, you had eight months of a recession for the dot-com bubble. Then you had in the 90s for the Gulf War, another eight months of recession. In 81, you had a double dip recession and oil crisis lasting nearly a year and a half. And then what I do want to go back to is this range. Look at 1957. So in 1957, you had just over half a year of a recession due to the Asian flu. And then following that, you had the 1960 to 1961 recession, which lasted 10 months. And then eight years later, you dipped back into another inflationary cycle with another 11 month recession. And, th and this is the most comparable data we have, right? Because we've got a pandemic, we've just got a pandemic, and now we've got an inflation led recession, which is going to emerge. The whole reason we're gonna go into recession is to bring down inflation. Now, if you remember, this was in the Paul Welker period, okay? And a lot of people saying Jerome Powell's managing to navigate this differently, he can do a soft landing. But the reality is if there's entrenched inflation, you could have this type of scenario, right? We can't rule this out. We can have a scenario where we're facing a 2003, uh, 2023 to 2024 recession. We could have a good period for seven to eight years before facing another recession. And let me remind you guys, ignoring this pandemic here, we have had the best part of 14, 14 years or so in a boom, right? And anybody who understands a normal economic cycle of bull and bust periods, you will understand that this is normal. This is not something to get hugely upset about, right? You've got to be able to navigate the good times and the bad times. And that is why I made a video for you guys. Make sure you go watch it. I'm going to link it up here for you guys on my tips of how to navigate a recession. Because there are specific tips and they're not complicated. They're very simple tips. But if you don't know them or you've never been in a recession before, I, I believe a lot of you guys who are new to crypto, who maybe only entered crypto in the last six months to a year or even a year and a half, you've definitely not seen a recession and you've definitely not seen one of the likes of 2007, 2008. Some of you might have been very young, right? So it's important you go watch that video Pick up on those tips because you've got to start incorporating them now. You may think this is the worst of it and everybody telling you 2023 is going to be amazing. If it is, great. All the tips I'm going to give you is like getting your winter jacket ready. If it doesn't rain, who cares? At least you've got your umbrella, right? At least you've had your umbrella prepared so they can call you a fool for carrying your umbrella. But less, it's better to be safe than to be sorry, right? So it's really important that you go watch those. Understand how to navigate this market, okay? Now, the next thing I do want to come back across to is the fear and greed index. You can see it's sitting at 28. And this is an important metric to kind of understand because if I take a look on the yearly chart, so if we take a look at this where we're at right now and just go back to the summer period, it was in the summer periods where we were sitting at 14, we had the lows of eight, I believe we had a six in there somewhere, uh, a six, there you go, six on the fee and greed index. So where we're at now, relatively, the markets are a lot more comfortable. And that's crazy considering we've just had our lows recently of 15,500 on Bitcoin. So we have to learn to make sure we're understanding the sentiment in the markets and then trying to do the opposite as best as possible, right? When the markets start to stabilize and start to get greedy, we want to be thinking, why are the markets getting greedy? When the markets are really fearful and irrational, we want to be the opposite. We want to be extra pragmatic. We want to be extra rational and say, okay, why are they all freaking out? What has fundamentally changed? Can I get to the core of the data? But at the same time, don't be that person that's delusionally buying the dip aimlessly, right? Yes, I do vouch for buying the dip. I personally buy the dip. I'm still DCAing little bit amounts, but I'm also co conscious of building my cash pile. I want to make sure I do have a cash pile. And a lot of people ask me, are you not DCAing? Now is the most important time to DCA. Yes, I'm DCAing because there's no guarantee that this isn't the bottom. This could be the bottom and we're going to regret that we didn't DCA. But at the same time, I always want to keep a cash pile, at least 15 to 20 percent. I actually ate into my cash pile during the last few months because I was buying the dip so fervently. But what I do want to do now is I want to get that cash pile back up again. I want to top it back up, make sure I'm in a comfortable position of 15 to 20 percent again. That way I'm ready that if we get another leg to 13, 12, 10, 11, maybe it'll never come. But if we do, I'm not just sitting there going, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to navigate this, but I have no cash to buy the dip. I'm ready to take advantage of it by the dip because the reality is this 16,000 to 20,000 level is no longer a treat for us. We've been here for a long time and therefore other people have managed to accumulate at this level for a long time. What you want to be able to do is buy at the levels where a lot of people haven't been able to. That's where the true alpha is. It's when most people have been shaken out that you're able to buy the dip at those price points. For example, if we had another dip now down to 14,000. Far less people are going to be buying that 14,000 dip versus the 16,000 dip. Far less people will be buying the 12,000 dip than the 14,000 dip. Even less people will be buying the 10,000 dip versus the 12,000 dip. 
So are you able to keep your mind right and your cash right at the same time? That's going to be the challenge through this recession. So there you have it, guys. Another fun indicator. Really was hoping for that weekly candle close below the EMA ribbon on the dollar index. It shows that there's still life in that dollar index yet. And we need to be careful because if that bounces, if that bounces aggressively from the EMA ribbon, we could have a painful start to the year in 2023. So don't listen to all those people saying it's all going to be roses and everything's going to be fun in 2023. Hopefully it is. I'd love to see a really fun bull market in 2023. But we're going to start off with the same worries as we went into the end of 22 with. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to smash your likes. Don't forget to subscribe. Go check out this video here and I'll see you in the next one.